Let f of x equal 1 plus 3 secant x and g of x equal negative 5. In the xy plane, what are the x coordinates of the points of intersection of the graphs of f and g for these uh, bounds right here between 0 and 2 pi? All right, so I view this in a way as kind of like a system of equations problem where this is a y equals and a y equals. So what I can do is just set them equal to each other. Negative 5 equals 1 plus 3 secant x. Let's subtract 1, let's subtract 1. Negative 6 is equal to 3 secant x. Divide everything by 3. Divide everything by 3. Negative 2 equals secant x. Look at all that space that I made. Now why did I make so much space? Well, I'm going to inverse secant both sides. Like so. When I do that, I'm going to flip it around. x is going to equal 2 pi over 3. Now, secant is negative, and remember the secant right here is negative. Secant's negative, the same spots that cosine's negative, and that's quadrant 2 and quadrant 3. Now, this guy lives in quadrant 2. Here's a little picture. Okay, here's pi. Here's half a pi. That's supposed to be 2. So 2 thirds pi is going to live, I don't know, somewhere like that. Okay? This is quadrant 2. I need a quadrant 3 example. So if this is 2 pi over 3, that means it's 1 third of a pi away. So similarly, this guy is also going to be 1 third of a pi away. And pi plus a third is going to also give me 4 pi over 3. That's going to be my guy. So my two answers are going to be 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3, which is u or c. The nice thing, I guess, when you see a problem like this uh, and you get to this first part and not even think about the possibility that could there could be a second part, is there's only one of these that says 2 pi over 3. So water gun to your head if you had to do a problem like this and you see, you know, well, I, I only got 2 pi over 3, so I guess the other answer is 4 pi over 3. You're in good shape for that. But, uh, yeah, that's how you do it. Answer C.